Hey, hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I am, what's my name? Ah, oh, yes, Dan Z, here to thrilled, here to thrilled. Let's try again. I am here and thrilled to talk some Star Wars with each and every one of you. We've got a lot of great people here tonight, as we always do on Coffee with Kenobi. We've got Greg. Good to see you, Greg. Ross is here. Tyler. Jim, all of our people, Ian, Mary, Zach, and Mita. We've got all of our people here. Uh, yes, thank you, Tyler. This is from her universe. This is from the New York Comic Con line. This was um, a really cool, it's, it says it's a jacket, but it feels more like a fatigue shirt on the back. It's got a, um, it's got a Mandalorian thing. That is, I'll just take a picture and post it. That'll be a lot easier. But yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Pretty nice. Hello there, Mr. Dickinson. Craig is going to be on Coffee with Kenobi this week. You're going to hear him tomorrow morning. Daniel, good to see you, man. Yes, indeed. The beard is coming in really nicely. Yes, it's it's a teacher. Like, it's too bad I, since I wear a mask at school. No, none of my students really know I have a beard. But I have a beard. How exciting. How Obi-Wan Kenobi of me. So we've got a lot to talk about this week. Mando Monday this week was really something else. So we're going to go ahead and look at that and see what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. All right, so much fun. So this week on Coffee with Kenobi, of course, we're going to talk about the top five moments from the tragedy. And oof, very, very, oof. I don't want to say too much because we got a lot to talk about. Daniel, good to have you here, my friend. And Blake, good to see you. Look who's here. It's Mason. May the force be with you, Mason's there. Mason, I'm so proud of him. We watched the episode a couple of times, but he watched it again by himself. He took notes. He took notes with this awesome Star Wars notebook, so I could not be a prouder papa for sure. Not only is he learning and watching and studying and writing, but he's he's prepared. So, hey, what a good student, right? What a good young man. Love it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what's going on with Mando Monday this week. I'm going to show you, well, this is last week's Mando Monday, so I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to bring over this week's Mando Monday. It's something else. All right, we're going to kick it off right away with Funko Pops. Normally I start with Hasbro. Hasbro does have a contribution, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, Ian says, and also with you, Mason, re responding to your May the Force Be With You. So we've got Moff Gideon. It's a Funko Pop, obviously, and it's pretty slick. Killian, good to see you, my friend. We've got him with the dark saber, and I put the two pictures because this is a glow-in-the-dark pop, and you can tell by the middle, of course, with the Darksaber, Ross got his. I would have expected nothing less. And Ross, does it only come with the t-shirt? I'm imagining that it does. But that one on sale dropped pretty quickly as far as going out of, going, you know, selling out naturally. And Tyler digs it. He's tempted to get the, the Moff Gideon said he loves the glow-in-the-dark pops. It is cool. Speaking of glow-in-the-dark pops, the next one also is glow-in-the-dark. This one is only at GameStop. This is the Mandalorian himself with the jetpack. So pretty cool. We also have a premium format sideshow Muff Gideon. To me, that dark saber looks more like an actual rapier or a sword, but it's really, really cool. I, I want to go back to the Funko Pop because I absolutely love Muff Gideon's little sort of eyebrows. Kind of got that eyebrow like the rock there, which is pretty entertaining. Anyway, so there's the premium figure. Pretty nice looking. The cape looks spectacular. The only premium figure I ever ordered was the Indiana Jones one, and it looks just like Harrison Ford. I love that idea. Find a place in my office for that one. Also, I purposely didn't show Mason this before because I knew he had been telling me all all night how much he wants it, and I don't blame him. Craig says the jetpack one looks nice. It does, Craig. We got some fun stuff to show besides that as well, but that one is awesome. So this is the Mandalorian's legendary blaster rifle, and it's a Nerf. So let's look at it closely. It's even got a real sight. You load the the two Nerf darts there in the front. It's very, very cool. I think it sold out pretty quickly, but then it went back on sale as well. But it's like 130 bucks. It is not cheap, but boy, does it look cool. All right, this is the way. Speaking of her universe, yes, I'm wearing her universe shirt right now, the New York Comic Con, the Mandalorian jacket, but they have a flannel one that comes with a hood on the back. It's got the Mythosaur skull. It's got the, the 
Mandalorian crest there, which is really cool. And on the right from me undies, they have lounge pants. Now these are expensive, but they're extremely comfortable, really, really high quality. So if you're in the market for that kind of thing, good to put on the Christmas list. Ian ordered the Mando and Grogu premium format figure a few months ago. Very excited for that. Yeah, when you get it, be sure to post that as well on in the CWK Cafe. By the way, shout out to all of you in the CWK Cafe because it's it's going very well. Building this community is fantastic. We get more conversations with like-minded people who like talking about Star Wars from an intellectual, fun, entertaining, family-friendly point of view. So thank you for everybody who's in there and who posts so much stuff. Tyler thinks it's the coolest Nerf product ever. I, you know what? I, I don't disagree. It's pretty cool. Ian says it's the Nerf to end all Nerfs. I agree. Zach says, let me go get that from my son. More or less, I'll take over that or take that over. You know what? We'd probably be uh, <laughs> jockeying for position over here as well. Minta also likes the Nerf gun. She says it looks amazing. Gives that for when I finally go back to the office. Well, there you go. There you go. I think that that's as good of a reason to buy it as any, Minta, of course. Mary ordered the flannel jacket for her son for his birthday later. Oh, very nice. Well, you have to let us know how it is. Blake needs that hoodie for the two weeks it's cold in Florida. Yeah, right? Or, I mean, honestly, Blake, it's cold in Florida all the time because they crank the air condition to like 50 degrees and it's it's always on high. So you could probably get away with it other places as well. Mean to order the hooded Mando shirt last week. And then Greg says, flannel Mando jacket means a new Pearl Jam album under the tree this year, kids. Well, there you go. That That's a very nice 90s joke. <laughs> Tyler says, Blake. Oh, really? You're cold? That's great. That's great. What else we got here? All right, so on the left, we've got more Mandalorian Pez, a rather unusual Grogu with eating that frog. That's still really caught on. I really think the one on the right, and Mrs. Zary will be excited to know that that our that's our student, Carter, said that I should get that Mandalorian little de- director's chair and bring that to school and sit in that while I'm teaching. You know what? I feel like that's a good idea. It would totally help the economy, but we'll see. We will see. So here are the Disney on Shop Disney. They have these keys that they're offering with a number of different things. They're not always Star Wars, of course. There's a bunch of just flat out Disney ones from all the animated stuff and theme parks and attractions. But they've got one that went on sale this morning. I think it was yesterday, actually, of the child. And there's a couple different styles. Personally, I've never really gone for these, but I I respect that people do dig it. Uh, So there you go. There you go. Now on now we've got more of the mission fleet. Uh, the one on the left has everybody, basically. But on the right, I really dug this one. Because it's got the Blurg. It's got one of the Blurg, which is really, really cool. And then it's got Queel, who is still one of my favorite characters. Alright, now we move into Ahsoka time. Obviously last week was all about Ahsoka. And they were a little slow to put out some of the merch. I don't know if it's slow, really. It's only been out for a week. But now we've got... Uh, some great Ahsoka Tano posters. If you go on StarWars.com and look at all of the the Mando Mondays portion of StarWars.com's website, every week you see all of the things they have to offer. And there's so many cool Ahsoka t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. I mean, look at that wonderful image. I don't remember seeing that in the episode unless it was very, very briefly. But it sure does make for a really nice, really, really charming image for sure. Okay. So that's pretty much it for... Mando Mondays this week. A lot of, a lot of great stuff. Uh, Greg also digs the blurry. The Mission Fleet line is quite tempting. We have the Mission Fleet that Hasbro sent to us with the Mandalorian and Grogu, which is really nice. It's pretty cool. I think Mason likes them. Mary says her universe has quite a few uh, Rosario Dawson Ahsoka shirts, which is also really cool. Minta digs the posters. Yeah, they're great. I mean, I think I might get one just to put in my classroom because they are really, really fun. All right emotionally is everybody ready to start talking about the tragedy let's just dive right in and look at our top five for this week this week's category is top five moments from the tragedy so really really quickly before we jump into our actual top fives themselves when it started and you're going to hear all about this on coffee with kenobi tomorrow featuring craig dickinson and jared cantor when it started and i saw the title I said, "Uh uh-oh, and Mason said, why? What does tragedy mean? I explained, well, for Shakespeare, it means somebody dies. Now, no one died, but we can certainly get into what the tragedy actually means. We talk about that a lot on this week's Coffee with Kenobi. So let's see. Mason, of course, says he wants the nerf, (laughs) and he knows how to use caps, everyone. How about that? 
All right. So number five, my number five for top five moments from the tragedy is the Dark Trooper appearance. I'm just going to come out of the gate with that one. We see them come out of that Imperial ship, Star Cruiser, and they show up and they have that close up of their helmets with the red fire and kind of a sort of a Tony Stark thing gone wrong. I thought we are in for it. This is what we've been waiting for. Very exciting. I knew it was going to be bad news, but still, just from the design, I thought, well, I need to have a Black Series figure of that, and you know they're going to make those, and they're going to do gangbusters. Mason's number five is when, towards the end, when Boba Fett is taking care of business, and the Stormtrooper yells, back to the ship, and he runs backwards. Mason acted that one out for me. It was pretty entertaining. All right. For Terry, number five, the relationship between Din and Grogu is becoming more like father and son. I agree. That's a great one. We're going to talk about that one a lot for sure. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Ian Thompson says, Fennec Shan lives. Yeah, that was nice. It was cool from the beginning. And this, the flashbacks at the beginning of this episode were really, really poignant because it showed you everything that was going to happen or at least give you allusions to what was about to happen. And knowing that Fennec Shan was coming back in some capacity, really cool. Greg's number five. Once again, the community comes through by de deciphering the Boba's chain coat so we don't have to. Nice way to give various levels of fandom good stuff and Easter eggs, no matter what the level they are on board for. Yes, and Greg got to share with us what it actually reveals in the chain code, because I didn't look it up. So I would love to see what you found out. Number five for Jim is Grogu activating the stone. Nothing we've seen in Star Wars showing the Force as a, as a physical source of energy, besides lightning, Sith lightning. So that was that was exciting. Minta also had the return of Fennec as number five. It was uh, it was Fett that it was Herat that they brought her back. She says, "Oh yeah." A Tyler's number five, Fennec Shan. It was cool to see her come back and also be an ally to Din. Plus, we got to see her in action, and it did not disappoint. How about that part where she jumps off the that little rock or that little cliff and and fires backwards? Mason and I were pretty sure that she was done for, but obviously she was not. She did really well. Yes, great. Of course, me too. I, I I knew what you meant. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Mary says the opening scene with the Mando and Grogu in the cockpit playing with the ball and their conversation about what's going to happen on Ty on Tython. That was spectacular. We're going to talk about that a lot, I think. Number five for Ross. Fennec Shand is back now with more Cyborg as a Ming-Na Wen fan. I felt a little cheated in season one, but figured she would be back. Happy camper. Yeah, she's so good. Uh, we, we saw her at the premiere. Walked by her a couple of times. Didn't really get a chance to chat, but she just seemed very happy and just has good energy. Daniel, number five, all the TKs, especially the artillery TK. Yeah, there was a ton of them. Blake says, Dan talking to Grogu in the opening scene, his interaction with the baby has grown and changed since the last episode. Boy, has it ever. Woodrow, good to have you here, man. Which was the bigger tragedy, the kidnapping of Grogu or the destruction of the Razor Crest? How many people... Okay, let's just talk about it now. Obviously, the, the advent, the Lego of Star Wars advent calendar that came out, for this year that we've been featuring on coffee with Kenobi on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. How about that? How about the fact that the Razor Crest was there and a lot of people aptly took the pictures of the pieces and posted them sharing that saying, well, this is what the Razor Crest is like now. How many people who purchased the Razor Crest on HasLab were like, ee, when they saw it get blown up? Just curious. You know, uh, Jabba's barge got blown up too, and that still makes a great collectible. So I wouldn't sweat it. Woodrow, glad to have you. Appreciate We appreciate the support, my friend. Glad to have you on Facebook Live as well. Greg uh, reveals Boba's name, Django and Django's master, mentor, uh, Jess, and names like Concord Dawn. Really? Now, is that language, is that considered Mandalorian text? I feel like it is because it's clearly not Oribesh. So that's cool. What I didn't, what I couldn't figure out was the, he says this armor's been in my family for 25 years. I don't feel how, how that works out. If you consider between Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith, that's three years. And from Revenge of the Sith to A New Hope is 19 years. And then from there to Empire is three years. And then from Jedi is another year. And then from Jedi to The Mandalorian is another five years. So 25 years seems wrong. So something's not adding up here. Exactly. Exactly. All right, let's go to number four. Number four of our top five favorite moments from the tragedy. Number four for me is Fett's backstory. So I've gone on record plenty of times in seven and a half years and said, I'm not really, I don't really, Boba Fett doesn't do anything for me. Yes, I like the armor. I liked him in the Empire Strikes Back. I love the mystery. 
But in Jedi, Attack of the Clones, and in the Clone Wars, it didn't really do much for me. But now we've got a backstory. We've got character motivation. We've got nuance. We see he's not one-dimensional. And we see that he's Mandalorian and that his father was a foundling, that Jango Fett was a foundling. That was amazing. Then I'm all in. Now Boba Fett is, I am all in with Boba Fett. And I've never truly been able to say that. So that was huge for me, seeing his backstory, getting actual reasons to care about him. Number four for Mason is when uh, one of the, when the commander with the pauldron says, blasted them, you idiot. And then, you know, doesn't go so well, but I think he got a kick out of that and thought that was pretty funny. Indeed. Indeed. It was played for last, but not if you're a stormtrooper, of course. All right. Uh, Ian is a Hazlab. We're still on board. Glad Ian. I'm glad Ian. I mean, and you should be. I mean, it's a great ship. It was a, it's a great ship. And, and gosh, who knows what's going to happen with that thing. I think it's more important that it was their home, a symbol of how they've lost their security. That's, that's what I took from that. Paul says the Razor Crest destruction was shocking. It really wasn't just kind of splintered into such a way that there was no doubt that wasn't coming back. Four for me to slave one return. I was excited when that appeared. It's been way too long since it took flight. It's true. That was quite a stunner. Number four for Terry, the destruction of the Razor Crest. I still don't regret purchasing the Hazlab version. Well, good, Terry, just like Ian, and I'm glad. And I don't think you should regret it. I think that's cool. Jim's number four, Fennec, shout out, shoot out, my apologies, with the Stormtroopers. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. Number four for Tyler going to break Mayfield out of prison. I know it's more of a setup for the next episode, but I'm very excited that Bill Burr is coming back. Maybe. Uh, I really enjoyed Mayfield. I'm looking forward to hearing his, his snark again. Yeah, I was a little, Mason and I were a little curious about why they would get him out when they've got access to the New Republic and it's the Empire. That would seem like much more natural. So I guess we'll see, won't we? For uh, for Ross, Grogu's connection with the Force while on the Seeing Stone is so magical and otherworldly. Moments like this make Star Wars what it is to me. I agree. The Force stuff is always, always my top thing, for sure. Greg, Bubba lost a little time in the Sarlacc pit. LOL, his internal clock could be off. True, but if it says here that it's 20, it looks down and says it's 25 years, I don't know. I'm sure that someone uh, much more apt at this than me will, will will figure it out. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll be sure to pass along if I find out. And if and if you find out, please let us know in the CWK Cafe. Mary's number four, Grogu on the Seeing Stone. I love that. everyone. I think that one's really powerful. I bet you'll see some Funko Pops about that or something. Ian's number four. I'm a simple man making his way through the galaxy like my father before me. Very great callback to Attack of the Clones and Return of the Jedi. Very good writing. I love that, too. I love that. Carter, good to have you here, dude. Carter says, seeing the child use the Force, dark but cool to see he has those abilities. I wonder how much he's not showing us. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Woodrow says, it hurts to see it get destroyed, but I love that ship. Glad I ordered it. Very good. Very good. Paul's number four, Boba Fett getting his armor back. Again, that's part of my number four, more of his backstory, but just getting a little context for him. Daniel's number four, the Dark Trooper appearance. Blake seen the, the slave one fly in my, my wife, watched her grown husband lose his mind at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Our wives put up with a lot uh, with us, for sure. Greg's number four. The Yes, the... The simple man callback was epic, and Attack of the Clones is not my favorite, but this really did a lot to change my mind. I agree. Added some context and some layers to this, for sure. Four for Zach, we have to travel with the windows down. LOL, the jokes. Yep, though that was pretty clever. Oh, five for Zach was the, the different Stormtrooper, like the Captain, the Grenade Launcher, loved it. Yep, you know, we'll see figures of that as well. Cool. All right, let's go into number three. Let's see here. Number three for me is the Fett solo fight. I'm not talking about when he's got his armor. And I'm not talking about with any kind of a blaster. I'm talking about with a Gaffney stick. Him going to work with that Gaffney stick like Conan the Barbarian and seeing how brittle those that armor was to the, the Gaffney sticks. As it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, those Gaffney sticks are not just for flossing Bantha teeth. They are for, for major battle, major butt kicking. And wow... Was it spectacular? Just, uh, the way Robert Rodriguez filmed that and him dragging the Gaffney stick and then just doing his thing, unbelievable. The It was so exciting. I was like pumping my fist. It was like, well, it was like when I was really into WWE, just how exciting some of that could be. It was just spectacular. I mean, for my money, maybe the best non-lightsaber fight sequence I've seen in Star Wars. Honestly, that's where I'm going to go with that. Uh, three for Mason says 
when he looks at Grogu at the beginning and says, you're special. When he tells Grogu that he's special, he goes, you're special, kid. That was very touching. That opening sequence, Mason looked at me and said, I think this is going to be my favorite episode ever. Because of the connection the two of them have. The connections are what are the most important aspect of Star Wars. So, obviously, I love that one, too. Let's see what everybody else has for their number threes. Look at this wonderful list. Okay, Minta's number three. The Dark Troopers, I got chills and I made their debut and I screamed when they took Grogu. Yeah, that was that was horrible. In fact, all weekend, whenever Mason and I would see a picture of Grogu or we'd see him around the house, we're like, oh, and it just kind of makes you sad because you know that he's been kidnapped. Three for Terra, the introduction of the Dark Troopers also. Yeah, those things are not going away. They're, they're going to be very popular. Tyler is number three. As the Slave One flies by, not something I was expecting. I know business was about to go down at that point. That's for sure. Number three, Boba Fett taking out the troopers with a gaffy stick, just like mine. Number three, his brutal fighting style seemed to be reflective of how he must have survived in a harsh environment after Return of the Jedi. Yep. And he's got a lot of anger and rage. We don't know fully what's motivating him, but we can probably speculate on that one. Three, for Greg, Fennec Shan's return in Moose as she eludes and knocks off stormtroopers. Amazing actress, and thankfully the character got a second act. Yep, I agree. Good to see her back. Three for Ian Foundlings. I love the Foundling connection between Din and Django and the way that informs the father-son relationship between both Django and Boba and Din and Grogu. Yep, as I said last week on Coffee with Kenobi, it's nice to have on this show a positive example of a father-son dynamic, which we don't get to see a lot of that in Star Wars, so it's really nice to see it. Three for Ross is Slave One flying across the screen. Another great one. A lot of people have talked about that one. It's a spectacular image. Three for Andrew, a compact, fast episode that quickly got to the tension and never let up. Yeah, when you first see it, it's only 34 minutes. You think, hmm. But then you realize that it could be not, that's not an indicator of the quality or what's going to happen because a lot happens in a quick amount of time. Expedited storytelling at its finest. Mary's has Bubba shooting the ships out of the sky with a grenade launcher and saying he was aiming for the other one. Boy, how cool is that? Like, he wasn't going to let him get away. That was really something else. Zach's number three, seeing the slave one coming down in the fear den was like, uh, we have to go. Yep, that there was some real tension and terror there. Carter's number three, seeing Boba absolutely roll through those troopers. It was awesome seeing him get some of the respect his story deserved. He isn't just a throwaway bounty hunter. He showed his, like, his likely Mandalorian training uh, in melee battle and his superiority. Uh, with his suit you're right i mean he knows what he's doing and boy did he ever earn that reputation which we never really got to see fully and now we have brian slave one was not expecting it brian do you still have your original slave one i'm guessing you probably do i wish i did number three for blake the razor crest being destroyed you could feel the pain din felt it really opens a lot of doors to where the story will go yeah i agree and as i said i feel like that is like their security and it's completely gone so that's pretty pretty rough Number three for Paul, the Stormtroopers still can't hit what they're aiming at, thank goodness. Exactly. Otherwise, it'd be a really quick show. Daniel's number three, the terrible destruction of the Razor Crest. I, I was wondering if people were going to pick that or not. So it definitely left an impact on people for sure. And that's important because it doesn't mean that we like these top five moments, but these are the moments that stand out, like those images, those scenes. Star Wars is all about iconography and, and powerful scenes. Two for me, we're going on to number two now, is laughter. We hear Din Djarin laugh, and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this, but he laughs with joy, with delight, with, with childish glee. Are you kidding me? The Mandalorian we saw stroll into that cantina in episode one, chapter one, and now he's laughing with joy and delight. That was so endearing and such an example of how far he's come and how much his heart has melted for Grogu. Boy, so very important. So very important for his character development. This is another reason why I like this guy so much. This guy so much. All right. And number two for Mason uh, is the same. The Mandalorian's laughter. He also put that as his number two. It's it's a really important aspect of his character. All right. Let's see what you all have for number two. Number two for Terry. Grogu on the seeing stone. He showed the purpose and focus a seasoned Jedi would appear to have. That's right. Yeah. Boy, did he ever just dial in two, didn't he, Terry? Just right on the money. Two for me to the similar Grogu on the Seeing Stone. You could see a strong connection with the Force despite the chaos that was going on around him. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't know if his eyes, when his eyes were closed, was that puppetry or was that CG? But it was really, really effective. He seemed much wiser and older than he actually is in that moment. 
Two for Tyler, Din and Grogu in the beginning. It was so wholesome to see Din say Grogu's name and chuckle like a proud day when Grogu reacted to it. I love the bond between these two characters. I do too. He kept saying the name and seeing Grogu react just made him chuckle. Number two. For Jim, Moff Gideon's appearance like Tarkin, his demeanor makes him really intimidating. Yeah, I agree. Those moths are not to be trifled with. Number two, for Andrew, hearing the words Death Trooper canonized gave me a strong desire to boot up Dark Forces. I've never played Dark Forces, but I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be digging that out uh, in, in the recesses of their video games. And wow, it looks like it's going to be fun. Two, for Ross, Moff Gideon being entertained by Grogu attacking his stormtroopers, followed by his monologue while interacting with his little prisoner. But some good acting, too. That was some really good acting, really, really chilling, and really kind of a daunting. Uh, intimidating, really. Brian says he does have the original Slave 1. He's got the 90s version 2. He's got the uh, the Vintage Collection 1. Love that ship. I guess you do. Wow. Is that your favorite ship, Brian? Is That's cool that you've got all of them. Really cool. I've got this one. I've got the, the, the small one that Kenner made you know, back in the 80s. So that's pretty fun. It still got fed in the cockpit. That's really, really cool. So I've got this one, and I've got the, the Bestman Cloud Car, the Snow Speeder, and the Land Speeder over here as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Greg, two, Fett in his armor and an action would have pay off for longtime fans of the character of the Mando Marks. Oh, I bet the Mando Marks went crazy, like in the best way possible. How exciting. Ian's number two, Tamira Morrison. He absolutely knocked it out of the park. He was great, both in and out of the armor. Those fight scenes of the troopers were the most intense, even terrifying action sequences in all of Star Wars. I agree. And it was just, it was like Avengers Endgame level quality. Carter seeing the Darksaber again. Yeah, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that, so I'm glad you brought that up, Carter. That was definitely important. Mary's number two, Boba in action. All of it, from fighting with a gaffy stick all the way to getting the armor and using it like we've never seen before. And even like his knees shot out those rockets. That was cool. That first shot of Boba Fett rep rep reprising his armor has been a long time since we've seen that figure. Daniel, you were right. And as if Boba Fett wasn't popular enough already, look out, everybody. Because they even converted me. Uh, Blake's number two, Grogu on the Seeing Stone. Visually, it was stunning. He looked like a properly trained Force user in the mystery of if anyone good or bad who hurt him. Yep, I agree. Uh, let's see. Ian says, I love your number two, Dan and Mason. More to come on that in my number one. Oh, sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Brian, Razor Crest getting obliterated. Never thought they would do that. Yes, I still want the HasLab version. Very good. Paul's number two, Boba Fett being told to leave the Dark Troopers alone so Grogu wouldn't get hurt. Yeah, that's important because it shows. And I didn't expect Boba to back off there. In fact, there were two or three times where I expected Boba Fett to betray them. But he appears to have as much honor as the Mandalorian, which did not expect. Did not expect. Hopefully it stays that way. Zach, Boba, everything Boba related. So I'm guessing Zach, you're a huge Boba Fett fan as well. No, it's not your favorite ship, but it's up there. Good. Well, my favorite ship is, of course, Millennium Falcon. Fortunately, that has never gotten blown up. All right. Number one, your number one favorite moment from the tragedy. My number one, Slave One. Yes. Now, so again, along with Boba Fett, Slave, Slave One has never been my favorite. I've always liked it. I've always thought it was cool. But I never, you know, I never thought of it as like in my top favorite Star Wars starfighters. But when they finally get to that seeing stone and he starts to concentrate and get into that lotus pose and Slave One appears and you hear the noise, I lost it, man. Mason and I had like goosebumps upon goosebumps. I'm sure I'm surprised the paint didn't peel off the walls from our adrenaline and excitement because we knew that is serious business. If Boba Fett tracks you, and we're finally at that moment we've been gearing towards since we first knew that Grogu had purpose like this. I mean, are you kidding me? That's the the great way to use nostalgia. It was such an adrenaline shot because we didn't know if, if it meant things were over. Is he going after Grogu? Does he want the armor? Is he going to be their enemy? I didn't know, but boy, was it thrilling. So thrilling. I mean, the best part about watching The Mandalorian for me is watching it with Mason on Friday mornings. The excitement we have from seeing it for the first time is just... Something I will always treasure. Number one for Mason is also the same as me. So father and son tied up. Number two and number one, which is pretty cool. All right, we got a lot of great number ones over here from each and every one of you. So let's see it. Let's see it. Okay. Da, da, da. Scrolling through. Minta's number one. Boba Fett's comeback, despite being almost devoured by the Sarlacc and losing his armor, 
He proves to everyone why he's considered one of the most dangerous bounty hunters in the galaxy. With, with or without armor, he can still bring his A game. You're right. And like we've been saying, he's he totally earned it, didn't he? I mean, we definitely got to see that in action. Terry's number one. The fierce emotion on Boba Fett's face as he fought before he retrieved his armor gave another dimension to what used to be a faceless character without depth. Ansel became a great fan. Yep, me too, Terry. And Tamara Morrison really brought it. I mean, he was fantastic. That emotion didn't feel like acting. It was really, really well done. Jim's number one, the Mandalorian scavenging the debris of the Razor Crest. It was devastating and shocking, but also very compelling. I agree. And finding that that little knob, the gear shifter, oof. Tyler's number one, Boba Fett. I spent years trashing on him for not doing anything in the movies. I can happily eat my own words. I buy into the hype. He was incredible and showed us why he was once the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy. Amen, Tyler. I've been saying that all show, as you know. I agree. I'm all in on Boba Fett now. Ross is number one. Din Djarin picking up the silver gear knob ball and the Beskar spear from the wreckage of the ship. I expect both items to play a critical role in the future of the series. I do too. I do too. Ian's number one. The entire opening sequence between Din and Grogu. I loved every second of it. Din playfully call, laughing, calling Ahsoka the nice lady. I, I love that too. Telling his son that he's special, seeing him really struggle with the thought of having to give Grogu up. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, there's so much pathos. So much emotion. Just kind of kind of wrecks you because you don't want him to not be together because you're thinking, oh, Grogu's going to be a Jedi or whatever. But he gets kidnapped. Ugh, we need to get Friday to get here so we can see what's going to happen. Number one for Mary, the two knows we had the Razor Crest getting obliterated and then Grogu being taken away by the Dark Troopers. That's so sad. Number one for Andrew, Boba committing to protecting the child even after he took his armor back. He's not doing it for Din. He's doing it because he knows what it's like to be a kid who's suddenly separated from his dad. I agree 100%. This is about honor. It's about respecting the armor and respecting that Mando respected the connection that father and son have, but also him understanding what the Mandalorian and Grogu mean to each other. I agree 100%. And if that is in fact true, then Boba Fett's even more compelling to me. Zach, number one, seeing Stone from the pose of Grogu and really asking who did he contact and who are we going to see with two more episodes to go. So pumped. I know. I know. I agree. Minta's honorable mention, the heartwarming opening scene with Din and Grogu, my heart melted into a puddle. Yep, and Mason and I love that so much as well. So many of us did. Ian, it was Ian's number one. Carter's Dark Troopers, I love when Legends items are pulled in the cannon. This is so cool. It'll be awesome to see Gideon or a different trooper in a Series 3 Dark Trooper exoskeleton. I'm glad they made them appear as menacing as they seem to be in Legends. Yep. And, you know, we didn't see them use the Force yet. They didn't really need to. It's going to be scary when they do. Blake's number one. Everything with Boba Fett, not from his combat to getting his armor back to getting a lot um, to his history. He's not just a bad guy anymore. He has character with good traits as well. This is my favorite moment since the prequel era. Wow. Good. I'm glad, dude. I'm really glad. No one for Daniel. When the image of Slave 1 flew across the sky, my mind started going crazy. I knew the game was on. Wow, that was awesome. I agree. I agree. It just It just felt so intense and ominous. And by the way, I'm just going to go for a really quick, uncharacteristic Dan Z rant. When I hear fan service, I'm like, really? Really? Fan service? That is that even something that people would complain about? Getting everything you ever dreamed about and getting it done in a professional, well-told way that adds to the mythos? I'm all in, dude. I think it was great. So keep it coming, everybody. Uh, Brian's number one. Boba Fett, everything. The, the, scare, the scarred look, hooded outfit, beating everyone up, getting the armor back, taking down two ships with rockets, team up. Slave one, you name it. Can you imagine all the people that are going to help the Mandalorian, presumably, get Grogu back? Look out. Number one for Paul, the honor that Boba Fett showed at the end, saying he would follow through with, with agreement to Den was really cool. Uh, Brandy, I agree with the family time. I love sitting around and watching with my four kids every Friday night. I hope we're making some good memories. Yep, it's great. It's so much fun. It's just a real treasure to me. Mary, honorable mention, Grogu toying with the troopers in his cell. Ooh, I, I don't know if I can go there, Mary. That, that one is just sort of Really jarring, and you'll hear about that a lot on Coffee with Kenobi coming out tomorrow morning. Terry, honorable mention, the hope of some great action-packed chapters in the future when Boba keeps his word his word to ensuring the child will be safe. Yeah, I mean, they're going to go a lot of directions with this. We've got a lot of incredible stuff, and and I am here for it. I am here for Dan, number one for him, too. I love it. I love it. So next week, no surprise. I mean, you know what the next couple are going to be don't you it's going to be top five most of the mandalorian chapter 15 who knows what's going to happen who knows how long it's going to be who knows how it's going to end but it's going to be really something that we're going to be on the edge of our seat for and as you know you can come back next week 
and share with us your thoughts on it. Uh, your top fives, I think it helps to process it this way. And I love hearing what, what moves everybody else. In fact, I'm watching the show, Mason. I'm like, I wonder what everybody's top fives are going to be. So much fun. Speaking of fun, as promised, it is time for some Star Wars trivia. Ross says, come on, Fennec Shan, Funko Pop announcement for next Mando Monday. You're probably going to get that, is my guess. I mean, I don't have any inside information on that, Ross. But it makes sense the way that things have been happening. Can't get here soon enough. I agree. Let's see. Um, I do want to point out if you liked our conversation about, about the Jedi last week, Tom, Corey, and I talked about it on CWK Pro. It was a little bit longer of a pour over than usual. Obviously, at, at a certain level, you can see the video version of it, but you can also see the audio version of it every Sunday morning. The video is on Friday mornings. We have a great time. It's one of the few places where you can hear the three of us break down different episodes of The Mandalorian. So there you go. All right. So Terry wants to know, is it really just going to be eight chapters again this season? Uh, yes, that is correct. That is correct. Well, I mean, to say she doesn't know if her emotions can handle it. You know, it's pretty intense. I mean, it's definitely pretty intense, but it's time. It's uh, it's really quite a payoff for us, isn't it? All right. Let's do some Star Wars trivia. All right, everybody, get your get those keys ready. You know the rules, everybody. You can't Google it. You can't look it up. Just go with your gut. The force is strong with you and win, lose, or indifferent. We're just, it's just fun to have these kind of things right here. Yep. Ian talks about the nuts discussions. That's right. That's a, that's a deep cut joke from our CWK pour overs for sure. All right, first question. Here we go, everybody. How many times is the Imperial Probe droid hit by blaster fire? Before it self-destructs. How many times is the Imperial Probe droid hit by blaster fire before it self-destruct? So no Googling, no cheating, just go with your gut. How many times is the Imperial Probe droid hit by blaster fire before it self-destructs? Any ideas? Jim says twice. Tim, hey Tim, good to have you in. Tim says once. Blake says twice. Zach says five. Mita says five. So we've got twos, we've got ones, we've got fives. What is it? Brian says three, Ian says three, Greg says three, Mary says three, Daniel says three, Ty says three. Uh, hmm. Mason, you out there, buddy? How many times does the Imperial Pro droid, uh, how many times is it hit by blaster fire before it self-destructs? Paul says four. Wow, we're all over the place with this. I love it. I love it. Well, a few of you are right. I can say that. Uh, Jamie, good to have you, man. Jamie says three. Mason says one. Anybody else? The answer is two. Two shots from Han Solo. And then the Imperial Probe Roid self-destructs. Okay. All right, next one. A one if it's in the eye. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Who orders the gunners on Darth Vader's flagship to intensify their forward firepower? Who orders the gunners on Darth Vader's flagship to intensify their forward firepower? Who in who indeed? Who orders the gunners on Darth Vader's flagship to intensify their forward firepower? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. I know there's a little bit of a delay from what I see to what you see. Uh, Jim says Piet. Ryan says Piet. Terry says Veers. Who else? Who else knows? I'll ask it again. Who orders the gunners on Darth Vader's flagship to intensify their forward firepower? Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dun, 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 dun. Piet. Piet. Uh, one for Veers. A couple for Piet. Minta says Piet. Ross says Veers. Uh, Captain EO, not exactly, and I don't even know if you spelled that right, but I will give you credit for the funniest answer, Tim, for sure. Uh, let's see. Mason says Piet. Anybody else? It is Admiral Piet. That is correct. Very good. All right. Let's see. Okay. Oh, boy. 
there's actually a question here that says, what color is Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber? Uh, it's obviously fuchsia, right? No. I'm not going to ask that. Who orders the transmission generator checked when communications are disrupted on Naboo? Here's something for the prequel fans. Who orders the transmission generator checked when communications are disrupted on Naboo? Who orders the transmission generator checked when communications are disrupted on Naboo? Jim says Panaka. Okay. I got another Empire Strikes Back one after this. Tyler says Panaka. Terry says Panaka. I'm starting to say that so many times that it's gonna it sounds like it's not even a word anymore. Panaka. Panaka. It sounds like a, a breath mint, doesn't it? Mita says Panaka. Brian has a different one. He says Sio Bibble. I like that. Uh, Greg also says Sio Bibble. Murray says Panaka. I'll ask it again. Who orders the transmission generator checked? The communications are disrupted on Naboo. Mason also says Panaka. Anybody else? We got a, we've got three for Sio Bibble and the rest for Captain Panaka. The answer is Captain Panaka. There you go. All right. What are the odds of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker's survival during the frigid Hoth night, according to R2-D2? What are the odds of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker's survival during the frigid Hoth night, according to R2-D2? Hmm, good question, everybody. What do you think? What do you think? What are the odds of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker's survival during the frigid Hoth night, according to R2-D2? Remember, no, no Googling, no cheating, no looking up on Alexa or on your phones. I don't know if Alexa would know this one, actually. No guesses? I know you guys are a little bit on a delay with me, so I'll give you a few more minutes. 2% says Paul. Daniel says 3,000 to 1. Blake says a bunch of numbers. Ian says 700 to 1. A really high number to 1. <laughs> hmm. Brian doesn't know either. 3,000 to 1. Well, I think we've got two people who said 3,000 to 1. Okay. Mary says never tell me the odds. That's probably the funniest. Ross says 2,000... Two million, yeah, I'm not a math teacher. Ross has a really high number there. Two billion, yeah, two billion. Mason says 2%. Anybody else? I'll read it again. What are the odds of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker's survival during the frigid Hoth night, according to R2-D2? Uh, pretty good since the sequel film was riding on it, and I got nothing. The answer, no one got this one, 725 to 1. But then C-3PO says, but R2 has been known to make mistakes from time to time. Yeah, 725 to 1. I thought everybody would get that. Wow. We finally found one that no one got. I can't believe it. You guys are all so smart. So how about that? How about that? Uh, Paul says, your copycat. No, Paul, you must be on delay because Mason had that way before you. Just kidding. Just great minds thinking alike. That's what that is right there. Okay. Oh, that's a weird question. Uh, I'm not going to read that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Here we go. What planet has popular centers at Anthout, Motesta, and Wayfair? Hmm. Yeah, math questions indeed. So what planet has population centers on Anthout, Motesta, and and way far, I guess I should say. There's another one on there that I feel like makes it too obvious, so I'm not going to read that one. I'm just going to make it really, really tough. I'll give you a hint if you need it. This will probably be... Maybe we'll do one more after this. So what planet has population centers at Arthout, Motesta, and Wayfar? I said Wayfair earlier, but it's Wayfar. What planet has population centers at Anthout, Motesta, and Wayfar? I mean, how many plants could there be in Star Wars? A million. A million, I think. There's so many. Even in the Star Wars book, we I thought we had all the plants covered, but then we've got a whole bunch more from the Mandalorian. So, wow. Any guesses? Once everybody starts guessing, then I'll start giving hints. But I can't give a hint yet. Not yet. 
There you go. Greg says Hosnian Prime. Okay, there's the first guess. Thank you, Greg. I love it. What planet has population centers at Anthout, Motesta, and Wayfar? No guesses. Daniel says Telos. Okay, and we got Telos and we got Hosnian Prime. I'll, I'm going to throw another one in there that's going to help get the ball rolling. Hoth, possibly. Hothio, Lothal. It is not Tatooine. Okay. Well, the other population center is Anchorhead. Anchorhead. So what planet has population centers at Anchorhead, Anthout, Motesta, and Wayfar? Anybody know? Brian does. Tatooine, Brian. It's, it's not Dantooine. <laughs> it's Tatooine. Yeah, Tatooine. I, I had never heard of, of Anthout or Motesta. Way far I had. So how about that? Two stumpers in a row. I'm going to have to... Let's see. Here's one right here. Uh, Okay. This might be tricky. This is kind of a 50-50 one. What Jedi slices Darth Maul's double lightsaber in half? What lightsaber slices Darth Maul's double lightsaber in half? You're right, Terry. You got it, man. What Jedi slices Darth Maul's double lightsaber in half? Any ideas? Jim says Obi-Wan. Minta says Obi-Wan. Tyler says Obi-Wan. Zach says Obi-Wan. Blake says Obi-Wan. Brian says Obi-Wan. Mary does. Terry does. Shelby, good to have you. Shelby says Kanan. Not exactly, but that would be cool if he was there. Greg says Obi-Wan. Paul says Obi-Wan. No one said Qui-Gon yet, and that's that's okay. Mason also says Obi-Wan. The answer is Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi, right uh, towards the end of their conflict, says that. Here's the last one. It's a tricky one. I wouldn't know the answer to this one. I would have to guess. But you get three options. So, Where does the boarding ramp open on Queen Amidala's starship? The left, the right, or the rear? Where does the boarding ramp open on Queen Amidala's starship? The left, the right, or the rear? Hmm. Any ideas? Where does the boarding ramp open on Queen Amidala's starship? You've got three options. The left the right or the rear. Brian says left. Minta says rear. Blake says left. Jim says left. Zach says left. Ross says rear. John, John, good to have you, buddy. He says rear. Terry says the left side. Daniel says left. Tyler says the rear. Paul has one for the right. First person to say on the right so far. Mary says left. Greg says left. Ian says the rear entrance. Any ideas? Any ideas? A lot of good guesses. I mean, I guess there's only three, but still. Where does the boarding ramp open on Queen Amidala's starship? The left, the right, or the rear? The answer is, Mason says it's in the rear. The answer is left, the left side. I wouldn't have known that either. I probably would have guessed the rear just because it seemed like the most random and arbitrary, but that's the answer. That's the answer. All right, nice job, everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. All right, any questions for me as we wrap up? Um, I looked at the calendar, and it looks like uh, Christmas is over the, over the weekend in a couple of weeks, so it's not going to interfere because uh, I always want to make sure that we hit these deadlines. We, we haven't missed a single Monday night Facebook Live yet, and I don't plan on stopping. So I hope everybody is enjoying them as much as I am enjoying them. I love interacting with you. I love hearing your top fives playing trivia, talking about the Mandalorian merchandise releases, and all the great stuff that's going on. Uh, I hope that everybody entered our Columbia giveaway. We're giving away a large of those coats that that Columbia had offered, featuring the Mandalorian, the interchange hybrid jacket that comes with a vest over it that's reversible. It's very, very warm. They sent me one as well. It's a great jacket. I post a lot of pictures of it on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I hope somebody in the CW Cafe wins it. So I think you've got about five more days to enter. 
Be sure to go to coffeewithkenway.com to enter if you have not done so already. Ross says, what coffee cup have you used the most while watching episodes of Mandalorian? Well, actually, it's a tie. Uh, I got sent one of the Mandalorian's helmet from Shop Disney, which I like. But I also have just this big, tall red Christmas one that I've been using. It's not related to anything Star Wars, but it just it fits a lot of coffee, and it's and I love it. It reminds me of Christmas. Do they have to be Star Wars questions? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can ask anything, Terry. Uh, Blake says, Dude, would you want a miniseries with Fett after seeing this week's episode, either his past, after the Sarlacc, or the future? Yes, I would. Before, on Friday morning, I would have said, eh. But now I'm all in. I think an animated one would be super cool. Like in the Clone Wars style. I would love that. But yeah, I would definitely love to. I'm guessing you would too. Tyler loves the Monday Night Live. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. I am glad, Tyler. It's one of my favorites as well. Tython is not listed in the Force book as a Force plan. I'm assuming this wasn't given to you guys during the production of the book. You know what? We we basically worked on what we had to that point. And what we had to that point, Tython wasn't re-entered yet. So we weren't we didn't put it in. But yeah, we, we only deal with what was to that point. We added some different ways of looking at stuff and add some new wrinkles to some things. But stuff that was coming out for the new season of Mandalorian, we did not we did not put that in there because we wanted people to find the surprises on their own. So that's a great question. What's your guess for the upcoming announcement by Disney Plus? I hear there's on tap for the 10th. I didn't even know there was going to be an announcement, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Greg. What do you think? My all-time, John Wilson, what is my all-time favorite Star Wars video game? John, I love your profile picture, by the way. That's really cool. All-time favorite Star Wars video game? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm inclined to say the Star Wars arcade game, the classic where you blow up the Death Star. The Return of the Jedi one is fun, too. I am, it might be the Star Wars video game, the, the actual cabinet video game. I love that one. Uh, <laughs> Terry says, I need some marriage advice. I ate my wife's frozen character cheese, and I need to know where I can buy more, Terry. You're out of luck, man. You better go to, to Costco or Target or Walmart or somewhere. I don't know how to, I don't know if I can help you. <laughs> I don't know why you're saying good grief, Mason, but I love it. I love it. I also love chatting with each and every one of you every week here at Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live. As we've been talking about throughout the show, this week on Coffee with Kenobi, we looked at the Jedi with myself, Tessa Smith, and Dennis Keithley. And tomorrow's episode is going to be all about the tragedy. It's going to be a good time for sure. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, as we already talked about this week, we're looking at the Jedi. And of course, you be sure to listen to Coffee with Kenobi each and every week to, for, to make you think, to make you laugh, to have a lot of good Star Wars conversation with good people. Can you ask anyone at Lucasfilm, when will I get a new Fed Black series based on the Mando episode? Well, Blake, I can ask. It doesn't mean they're going to tell me, but my guess is that if you just stay tuned to what's going on uh, with Mando Mondays, you're going to get something really fun. This is indeed the way. Good to have all of you here. Mary, you have a great week as well. I'm excited to chat with each and every one. Forward to chatting with all of you next week to talk about your top five, five favorite moments from the penultimate episode of The Mandalorian, Chapter 15. Blake, thanks, man. It's the best because of all of you. I appreciate it so much. Carter, we'll see you virtually at school tomorrow for sure. Daniel, thank you. Brian, you have a good night. Greg, fun to hang out with you, man. Always appreciate you joining us. Uh, Ian, you have a great week. Thanks, man. Ross, be well, too. Congratulations on all your success at school. And uh, Jim, my pleasure to host. Thanks so much, everybody. And Mason, Jonah says hello. I will be sure to pass that along. And Mason, of course, says hi back to you. Have a good one, everybody. This is the podcast and the Facebook live feed you're looking for. We'll see you next time.